Hi, Carol here, and a warm welcome to my craft room. Well, I'm going to be making Christmas cards, I think, for the next month or two. And I thought I would uh, start out with making, a, actually, a clean and simple card. It's, it's a one-layer card. I'm really not familiar with doing many of these, as you know. <laughs> But I decided to do a four by seven and three quarters. It was four by eight, but I did cut it down. And I was inspired by a card I saw on Pinterest. And uh, it wasn't like this one, but the inspiration was there. It was similar. And here I'm taking a sheet of Avery um, masking paper. But I don't end up using it as a mask, as you can see. I just end up cutting it apart. And then you want to take, if you want to mimic this card with me, you just want to take three inks, whether they be oxide inks like I'm using here today, or um, dye inks, whatever, pigment inks, whatever you have, and uh, two blues and a pink. And uh, you're pretty well set. The idea for this card was from going on Pinterest and I was looking at uh, vintage cards and I'm talking vintage cards from back in the day you know the 50s 40s those style cards but yet bringing it up to date and I think you'll really like this because it's not a difficult card you don't need many supplies which is really nice and uh, I'm going to take you through the process so the front of the card is hills you just want to cut a sheet of paper uh, typing paper would be great because it's nice and flat and then just cut layers of hills in different uh, forms and as you can see I started with I think it's festive berries in the oxide ink but I only want a little bit of the pink to show through and then I went to two different blue colors not going over to the crease as you can see just you know sliding it across it is a nice deep color and there's one hill I mean very easy and uh, so what I do is I keep those scissors to my right handy and I just keep cutting it off so that I have different forms and setting it on there some will have you know different styles of uh, hills and um, some will be flatter but the process is to have it in the blue hues two different blues and the pink and then what we do with it later, it just looks beautiful. Very vintage, back in the day style card. And I like the fact that it is uh, folded to be a four inch across by um, eight inch. And if you want to keep it at that, I just had to cut it down because of the envelope. I made an envelope to uh, match. So here you can see how I'm making the hills come, you know, form down. Some are... Uh, across just um, yeah just have fun with it set I decided to use is one I haven't used yet and it's under the mistletoe it's a beautiful set my friend Debbie uh, sent it to me thank you Deb and um, it's just gorgeous to use for um, Christmas cards and it's simple in the fact that you're just using the mistletoe and the berries and um, yeah so you can't get any easier than that and then what you want to do to expand the card in adding different elements is up to you so that's what I did here I just kind of you know went with it as I was uh, you know it's not a cased card per se but the idea is there and I thought it was very elegant you know, it would be beautiful to do something like this and put like a snowman stamp set on the hill or something, you know, it's so very uh, simple in the sense that it uh, doesn't take a lot of supplies and, um, it, the, you know, the colors are gorgeous, the oxide inks, wow, I mean, you can't go wrong there, right? I think the main thing of doing a card like this is just uh, cutting the hills and the shapes that um, you're happy with and using the blues to your advantage you know a dark and a mid-tone blue and the one uh, oxide ink there is um, kind of in the turquoise I can't think of the name of it right now but on my blog 
I'll list the supplies as best I know how. There aren't many supplies on this card, believe it or not. But uh, the card on Pinterest, it just had, like I said, I think I said it in the edit here, that it just had some twigs sticking out of this right-hand side straight across with the sentiment. And the hills, like, you know, not as many as I have here, just a few. But the concept was just elegant. It was really nice. And just go with the fact that you want to have a little bit of the pink peeking through. And look at that. I mean, and I love the fact that it's a long card. Generally, I do 6x6 six six or 5x5. Five five. Uh, you know, I like to really bulk it up in um, more or less a, a vintage antique style card of the past in my Christmas cards. But I'm telling you, this caught my eye and fell in love with it. And so now all you have to do is decide, okay, what do I want to have as far as greenery? And uh, this set was just perfect. So I'm situating the uh, mistletoe going down uh, like the hills are, but in the opposite direction. <laughs> Excuse me. So if that makes any sense. And it has this cute, cute bow in it. Um, that is perfect for just hanging out there on the hill. You know, it's not attached to anything. It's just hanging out there. And look at the, look at here. Yes, I'm fine. I'm using my Tim Holtz platform. I love this thing. Love it. And uh, I'll leave the video links to where I made my own um, magnets here. Probably thinking, what is she doing with that triangle? <laughs> All I'm doing is uh, trying to figure out if I have enough room to put the sentiment. And it's going to say under the mistletoe on top. So here I press it in. Now this is fabulous. I just take it off, turn it around, add my Versamark. And I mean, can you get any sweeter than that, especially for doing a video? And then click it back into place and stamp it. I mean, sweet or what? And because it's photopolymer, I'm using the photopolymer side. The only thing I didn't do, I forgot to put my powder on. You want to put some anti-static powder on. But it worked out well. I'm glad it did. I didn't have too many strays. But I'm going to show you when I forgot on the inside of the card. <laughs> I'm going to show you, if you have a few little stray pieces, how you can resolve it and make, uh, make it look like um, they were meant to be there. Don't even worry about it. Now for the actual mistletoe branches, I wasn't sure if I wanted black or gold, so I decided on both. Mix them up in that coffee filter, any colors you want, would look beautiful. And uh, so now I'm going to add it to the Versamark and uh, heat set it. I didn't put that anti-static powder on, so I'm going to need to grab a paintbrush and just grab the little strays off there best I can. And it worked out well. But there was an issue there where the uh, mistletoe branch didn't come right up to the bow. So an easy remedy is your micro brushes. There's a site called Wish and you get them for a dollar for a pack of a hundred. I'll try to remember to leave a link on my blog so that you can uh, check it out. So here I've got um, my heat tool obviously. <laughs> and I'm heat setting it trying to decide what I want to do. Now, uh, mistletoe, I looked it up as beautiful uh, flower, like a uh, bush. And I didn't know it clumps in trees, as well as uh, shrubs, so it's beautiful. And the uh, actual berries are mostly white, but I did see some red ones. I'm going to do some red ones on the inside. But uh, I first have to join them up, right, uh, onto the sprig. So... Um, that's what I'm going to do next. I don't want my berries just floating out there, <laughs> floating in space. Yes. So um, anyway, I really do hope you give this uh, card a try. This would be nice on a tag as well if you're doing up Christmas tags, just to have something like this on the front of the tag. I mean, so many ideas. The card that I'm going to try to do today uh, that's uh, more of a... Christmas romantic looking vintage card if there's such a thing. That's what I wanted to do. So here I took off the lid. Oh my, I can't tell you how much I love this platform. 
you just, especially for doing videos, you just take the lid off, you put your ink or Versamark on, put it back in, and stamp. Easy peasy. So, um, anyway, I did it in the gold. Now I'm going to put it back in the jar. And it's under the mistletoe. And from here on in, once I connect the uh, berries to my branch, I am just... Uh, you know, going with it. Now, you know, oh, this is my file eraser. I'm just getting a few of the little strays from not having the uh, powder down. Well, here's what I decided to do. Let's just move forward. I thought it'd be kind of nice to put one of these mistletoe sprigs on the inside of the card using pigment inks. And these are Avery L. And I did a light green, mid-tone, and a dark and after I got it stamped and I put it down, oh, there's my daubers. <laughs> I don't even know if I used the daubers. Isn't that funny? But they're in the edit, so we'll just go along there. So anyway, I looked at this green, and I, I just didn't, I didn't like it for some reason. It needed to have a little bit of substance. So I used Catherine Pooler uh, Midnight Black ink, wonderful, juicy inks, uh, her inks. And... Um, yeah, so it gave me just the edges with the little bits of green on them. And I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to put the little berries on there as well after I clean up uh, this uh, stamp. But uh, the one thing I wanted uh, you to notice is the technique I use on um, coloring these in with alcohol markers. And believe it or not, shopping in my own craft room, I remembered I had the stamp abilities. Remember back in the Stampin' Up! days when they came out? Well, I had ordered um, all of them that they had out there, and they are still as juicy, and they have a wonderful tip on them. So I grabbed three. They, I think back in the day they came with three, a light, medium, and dark uh, to a set. I can't remember. It was so long ago. But there they are right here. What a wonderful tip on these. I've forgotten how nice they are. Now, don't get me wrong. I love my Copics. Oh, yes. Uh, but uh, let me just interject here. I'm using Catherine Pooler's red ink for the berries. So I'm going to do the traditional green sprigs. But what I'm doing here is on the leaves, or the sprigs, or whatever you call this mistletoe, and I'm also connecting uh, the actual berries together but I go back in with a Copic friendly alcohol marker friendly pen in black just so it didn't have that thickness from the marker so I, I just want to explain right here I really like the technique uh, when I use this I'm going to zoom in I put the dark green like the olive green down on the edges like coming out from the branch as you can see and then instead of going in with my mid-tone right away and blending it, I immediately put clear embossing powder and heat set it. And then I go back with the mid-tone after I set this. And it just seems to pop up each layer because you're, every time you put the embossing powder on, you're uh, overlapping, so to speak. And I really did like the look of this. And as you can see, I'm just going in with the mid-tone and uh, I'm going to do the exact same thing and it just looks beautiful uh, than having it like a flat color and then you get three times the thickness uh, if it's still wet if the marker still wet on three of the different shades which makes it really really stand out so I wanted to explain that I love the color red for these berries even though most uh, mistletoe berries are white. It was interesting to read about mistletoe as well, you know, that they grew in clumps in trees as well as shrubs. I thought that was amazing. Yeah, I wouldn't be climbing any tree to get these anytime soon. <laughs> but anywho, yeah, that's kind of neat, eh? So here's the light color, and then we're going to finish that up, and that's the branch on the inside of the page. Okay, moving along on my clean and simple card. I just love it. It's a one-layer card. that I'm really proud of myself. 
uh, actually doing a one layer card here's the stamp abilities I just really like this set for anything that's greenery um, yeah I just it, it's kind of re it was relaxing to do this now I'm taking my uniball gold pen and making dots because remember I said earlier that a few strays get on you know if you don't use your resist powder for your embossing powder um, your pouch or whatever you end up with a few little specks so instead of using my eraser I took it the next step and used the gold uniball pen and added dots of gold because under the mistletoe here is gold and also I took a sprayer and I sprayed it with the uh, fine mist Tim Holtz spritzer so that I in the front so that I had that really nice look of uh, of snow actually I think it looks really pretty when you spray over top of oxide inks don't you I know the video is uh, you know almost 40 minutes long but I wanted to just show you some little wee techniques that you can use when doing a card you know if it's helpful and um, I haven't put a card up for a little bit so I just you know I tend to like to chit chat <laughs> A little bit you know as I'm doing the card you can always stop the tutorial and come back as well but I'm taking my white uniball pen and I'm just adding it to the berries and the inside of a few of the leaves uh, the little bow and then I'm going to add some more bright white snowfall as well as having the wet uh, sprayed look on the oxide ink I, I really think it is a wonderful easy peasy uh, Christmas card to do even if you left the inside without anything on it just having this and wouldn't it look pretty I said it before I know but as I'm looking at my edit here I think it would make a beautiful tag with a to and from uh, on it you know on it a, um, a self-made tag for Christmas I think it's a pretty uh, design Next, I'm going to grab uh, two reds out of my Copic markers, an R29 and an R59. That's a beautiful combination to have a deep color towards the inside of your bow and then a nice bright red. So uh, that worked well for me. I tend to, for the reds, I like the 29 with the 59, uh, the R59 together because it's, uh, it's kind of like a mid-tone and a dark. So, um, yeah, and then um, there's the 5.9. Such a pretty color, that cranberry color. Now I'm just going to do a little close-up there really quick, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, now what? I have the outside done, and you know what? This is Christmas Lodge, I think it's called, from Stampin' Up! And um, I really love that set and I haven't used it. I'm going to start getting out all of my nice old, older sets that I have of Stampin' Up! Such pretty Christmas uh, sets. And in this lodge set is this Merry Christmas and I just love it. The C in the middle for Christ uh, has a beautiful font on it. It's just beautiful. So here I'm using my verse mark and I'm putting it on my 140 pound Stampin' Up! vellum. Any vellum will work, but this is a nice thick vellum. And then I'm going to take it off and put some clear embossing powder right here. That's the uh, Midnight Black Catherine Pooler ink that I have open there. I should have it shut because I'm using the powder. But anyway, yeah, I'm just going to clean the rubber stamp up and then I'll heat set it over top of this red, Christmas red, uh, it's almost like taping paper. After I put the clear embossing powder on it, I'm going to cut it down so that I can make a flag for the inside of the card on the right hand side that you're looking at it there. And I set it, I wasn't sure exactly where I was going to put it, but once I had it right about there, I was happy. So I grabbed my Nouveau um, liquid glue and I'm going to put it down just behind it. You don't have to put it all the way on it'll really hold well and uh, then I got a little bit of the berry with a stem on it to put underneath so while that's drying I just put a little acrylic block and then um, these are my Tombow markers and I did the berries in red 
and then the stem in the green using the Tombow markers. I'm, I'm trying to use a lot of product that I have in the craft room. Even if it's just a little bit, um, I think it's nice to use. And here I'm cutting it into a flag just on the inside. I just flagged the inside there. Isn't that pretty? With the little stem of the sprig of holly. I think it's so nice. And then I added some gold dots because it had some little powdered dots on there. Um, so instead of you know having to erase it or do it over, I just put the gold uh, pen with little dots on it and so, so pretty. And then I heat set it again and that way it'll just activate the glue and it'll harden again. And you have gold dots on either side of the card. Isn't it oh so pretty? actually poured a little bit of the embossing powder right on top of the vellum and then heat set it quickly so that I could get that wet look on the vellum. It really did look nice and then I'm just going to take my bone folder here and give it a nice crease down the back and then just as I did this I noticed that I had a little bit of gray ink that got this is why clean and simple cards are so hard to keep clean and uh, it was just a little bit of gray and I didn't want to erase, you know, erase it. So I just put Sending Love. That was in the set. Beautiful font to match the under the mistletoe font. And I put it down. It really didn't, you know, take uh, away from the card. But yet it covered up that little gray spot that I had down there. And I should know better and put something down, shouldn't I? <laughs> now here's something I've used before. It's called Spoonful of Snow by Stamp Pendus. And it has all kinds of chunks of beautiful glitter and ice, like little chips of like ice. And to get the effect of a vintage card, you know when you look up the older cards uh, from the 50s and that, they have uh, a lot of glitter, like they'll have bells and they have glitter on them. They have hills, they have glitter. And I wanted to have this because it had chipped uh, glass in it, like it looked like glass. I'm just maneuvering it with my fingers so that it's only on top of the white portion of these hills. And what's really cool about this stuff is... Um, you heat set it underneath the card. You do not heat set it. There's nothing that is keeping it there, if you know what I mean. There's no, um, yeah, you just pour it on whatever you want to have this look of glitter and that glassy look, and then you heat it from underneath and it melts it right onto your card. It's amazing. And uh, I just love the look. It made it, it totally brought it down to a vintage style card. I think it's totally amazing how this uh, glitter and glass mixture stays on the card just heat setting it underneath and then what I did uh, once it was stuck on there and it was adhering to the cardstock which is 140 pound by the way uh, the cardstock I'm using and then I was able to go and do the front but you don't have to do the front it's already melted onto it then I took my clear Wink Estella and went over some little parts of the mistletoe on the front I think it's oh so cool I love things uh, that glitter on a Christmas card I think it just adds the oomph you know doesn't it <laughs> And now the envelope. Of course, I'm going to need an envelope. It's uh, I wanted it to be gold, and I had a 12 by 12 gold sheet of paper. This is from uh, Martha Stewart uh, 12 by 12 pack. has some beautiful uh, gold and silver designs and flat gold and silver papers. So this measures out to 9 and 7 eighths by 9 and 7 eighths, I think. And that's why I had to cut it down just a bit. It just I didn't want it to be really snug, so I cut a bit off the bottom of the card, not much. So once I had the actual card all punched out and ready to go, I am just going to make an insert. Now, the insert on the flap of an envelope is very easy. You just take another 12 by 12 sheet or whatever size will fit there. First, I want to just take the little groove out of this one area here 
and I like having my um, craft, my cutting uh, board always set up now on my um, island because it makes it quick and easy to just chop anything off and I did need to take the flap there and cut it. It was a little too high because it's four by seven and three quarters I think the card ended up. Flat gold uh, of this paper matched perfectly with the embossing powder on the front of the card that said under the mistletoe and then this paper matched beautiful because it's from the same set so all I do is put it corner to corner and bring it down just slightly so I have a nice edge showing on the card I cut it off like this like you can see it right here so easy to have an insert like this and then I needed just a little bit more off so that I could have that little edge and then I'm going to cut the side so all you do is fold it like this and that way you know where to cut isn't that awesome just took my Fiskars little cutting knife and cut down the sides and it's going to make for an elegant flap which is really nice when you have you know you open up the envelope and you have like a matching matchy matchy yeah and it's gold the same flat gold I think it's really pretty I took a little bit of the edge off I'm going to put some liquid glue on the back. My choice is the Nouveau glue. Any liquid glue would work on the flap. And you could either, before you glue it, you could do the fold if you'd rather do it that way, or you can do the fold after. And this is very thick paper, the Martha Stewart 12 by 12 pack here. I'll try to remember to um, get you the name of it. I'm not sure if it's available. I got it at Michael's last year. And when I put the tape down, I just want to mention this on the sides of the envelope. Um, yeah, I got to take a, the bit of the point off. It's too long. And then I took my crocodile and uh, made a hole right there because I'm going to attach, I'm going to make it look like a ribbed gift, but I like to put the card in first so um, it's not tight. So that way your envelope adjusts to the thickness of your card instead of trying to do it the other way around and you find it's too tight. And then once again, guess what? The gold pen comes out. To zoom in and all I'm doing on the white here as the gold snow is falling, <laughs> give it that Christmas ambiance. <laughs> is put a stitch line down the side with gold. I thought it would just add it. And I like the under the mistletoe sentiment. It matches the flat gold of the cardstock. So that's kind of nice. So I'm going to take the uh, double-sided tape. It's a um, quarter inch. And there you have it. Slides in nicely and you don't have a tight squeeze. So as I turned it over there, you're going to notice something on the envelope, yes. Uh, after I put the bow, I wanted to cover that hole, kind of, so I thought it would look really nice to um, just put Versamark and add the bow to the flip-up uh, portion of the envelope, of the lid, and then I'm going to heat set it here, and you're not going to believe it. See that black ink up there to the left? Oh yeah, a bit of it got on my, make sure you cover it up. See where that little bit of <laughs> mistletoe? berries I put one out over top of it you'll see it when, once I get my acrylic block look at that can you believe it so I had no choice but to get out my red ink and put the berries all the way around the back which I didn't mind it did look good but look at as I'm pressing down I'm adding more ink <laughs> yeah, so I just thought just go with it Carol just yeah right over top cover it up I'm more care look at that there's another one Oh yeah, it was nothing but uh, little wee things all over the place here. Talk about berries. <laughs> if I wasn't making an ink mess, I wasn't stamping it down hard enough. But later on, what I do is you just have to color it with your uh, alcohol markers, Copics, whatever, stamp abilities, whatever markers you have uh, would be great. I just end up coloring them to add two different colors just to get a little bit of dimension there. But it did look nice because I thought, okay, peel off the branch and we're going to add that with black. 
and I'm kind of cleaning up to make sure because if any more ink gets on the spots, I'm not going to have any room to put anything else. So I'm trying to be a little betterful here. Look at the ink up there. I mean, ink city. So here I go. I used uh, Catherine Pooler's black ink. A lot of ink on that. And immediately I am going to put clear embossing powder on it. Now I'm going to cover all the berries with the uh, clear embossing powder and it does look really nice. I mean, I don't mind it at all. The, the envelope would look nice, just plain gold, yes. But, you know, when things happen, things happen. So you have to just embellish over top of your mistakes. So that's what I did there. <laughs> and I'm looking at it right now thinking, yeah, move that envelope, Carol. Uh, I don't know why I'm not putting the lid on my inks right away. I mean, that would be the wise thing to do, right? Now I'm going to grab any stray pieces of the embossing powder and I'm going to heat set it. I'm going to put three of the uh, mistletoe leaves, I guess twigs, sprigs, on the back here just to, uh, you know, give it some evenness. Yes, take that ink and put it away. <laughs> Actually, I'm stamping another one of the sprigs here and I did grab a paper towel so that it kept my envelope clean. It's just crazy, isn't it? So here you have it. I have my design all set for the back of the envelope. It looks like I did it on purpose. And all it takes is that one little bit of ink and it just totally uh, devastates you. <laughs> and you end up having to, you know, embellish the back, which is, uh, you know, it ends up nice if you, if the front, if I can keep the front from getting anything on it. So here, I love this um, set by Stampin' Up. It has these little uh, birds on the branch, and I didn't even show it here, but I put that down on the left corner, and then to turn it around, all you do is stamp it on an acrylic block or stamp it. What I did, see this packaging? I stamped the sprig and the birds on the packaging, right on the case. Then I turned the case over, and uh, pressed it, see, oh, I'm sorry, I brought the envelope to there and pressed it down and now I have a mirrored image of the uh, birds and the twigs, see, for that side. So they both are in the opposite direction. It's, it's that easy. Just grab a stamp case, stamp it on there, and then you'll get her. any image will be reversed when you add it to your paper. I love the fact that you can just take a stamp and reverse it like that by just stamping it onto something plastic, then adding your paper to it or vice versa. So I'm trying to find where to put uh, Merry Christmas right there, kind of in the middle. And isn't that pretty? Then I'm going to put the clear embossing powder on it, take my Copics, and I'm going to color in the two little um, red birds. I'm going to make them red birds on each side. And I think if I had a twisted uh, that right side sprig with the birds, it would have been more uniform. But uh, anyway, I just taken my Copic Red here and so that you can see the birds in the twig. I think it just adds a little bit, don't you? To You can't see them otherwise, actually. And um, yeah, just so elegant and pretty, I think are all the Stampin' Up. I think it's called the Lodge. It has the big tree, a beautiful lodge. It has these sprigs with the birds on them. The Merry Christmas like this with that beautiful calligraphy font. Love that set. And if I'm not careful, <laughs> I, I'm looking at it there thinking, oh my, you know. And then I add Winkostella, the clear Winkostella, just here and there on the front. So it gives it that little extra... Uh, shine you know and there you have a close-up of the back and now we have to add some ribbon and um, gold thread before I get any more ink or anything on my card <laughs> I'm putting it inside and then I'm thinking okay I'll start with uh, this really fine gold thread that I have to tie it up and I've got it cut right there in the midst of everything and I tied that up but I didn't think it was enough. I 
tied, you couldn't see the bow portion of it. So I thought, you know what, I have to get some really nice ribbon so that the gold thread sits on top of the ribbon. Uh, kind of like some chiffonny type ribbon. I don't know what you call that. I'm sure you know what I'm... You'll see it when I get it. And my apothecary, if you follow my channel, you know I have this 12 foot by 4.5 or 5 feet tall apothecary um, antique. It's got 60 drawers. I'm going to show you a picture of it. I keep it in the guest bedroom off of my craft room. I keep my ribbons in it for now and it has 60 drawers so I'm able to put whatever uh, you know overstock of stuff that I have hidden away. <laughs> so here you have it. I'm putting the gold thread on top of the red ribbon. I don't think there's anything else I can put on this envelope. <laughs> Yeah, every every inch of it has something stamped on it, doesn't it? But anyway, this ribbon um, is going to look like a gift wrap. And I don't have the card inside because I have to take some pictures uh, for you at the end of my tutorial like I always do. And thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for taking your time to watch my video. I mean, almost 40 minutes again. Wow. But... Um, I hope you are inspired by um, this card and envelope. You have yourself a blessed week and you know I do appreciate my new subscribers and my subscribers that have been with me from the beginning. I do appreciate you and your comments. Um, I sure have fun putting up uh, video tutorials. So take care and I hope you enjoy the pictures and I will see you on my next tutorial. Mm -hmm.